Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are doing super well. So we want to talk about a white buffalo calf woman, which, well, let me have Cindy tell you. <laughs> well, she's, she's one of my very first guides that came to me in a meditation, and she's who I use. I call on her energy when I'm working in a medicine wheel, when I'm working with animal medicine and, and totems and soul animals and stuff like that. Interesting. Interesting. So she is one of the first ones to come to you. And, you know, sometimes we don't understand, you know, why it's a particular guy that comes to us, you know, but it could be in our DNA, our heritage. It, you know, it definitely could be in past life as well that we're connected to them on the other side. Yeah, I think it's all of those. I think it is in the DNA, the heritage and somewhere in my DNA memory, she exists. So can you tell us some of what she's taught you? She's taught me how to use the medicine wheel. She's taught me how to call on, um, like how to call on animal medicine. She's taught me how to make crystal grids, um, processes, uh, healing, stuff like this. You call in her energy and you let it flow through you. Mm -hmm. So there's an energy exchange. Definitely. Mm hmm you know, everything in life, there's supposed to be an energy exchange. There should be an energy exchange. That's the way things work. It's important, you know, because if, if like, there needs to be balance, and that's a big part of it. When we fall out of balance, a lot of times it's because some are perhaps taking and not giving in return, and we certainly see that in the way this world is structured. It, it is very much structured that way, and when it comes to medicine wheels and you know shaman stuff you know it is very much give and take and and that can be a delicate balance but it's also like the most beautiful thing ever you know when i think of shaman and shamanism right away a walker between the worlds comes to me that that's what immediately comes to me i don't have to even think about it that's what a, a shaman is in so many ways of course, it's somebody that uses natural things to help people, uh, as well as, you know, doing things like helping with soul retrieval, you know, from a shattered soul, which is something that is very real. Yeah, that's actually something I do with the, the tuning forks. You know, um, other shamans with soul retrieval might use a drum to come into the energy field and you take it apart and you pull out the traumas or you bring back the soul and then you put it back together. I use the tuning forks to do that. Well, as we were saying in the last video, everything is energy, energy, energy. That's what we are. We're balls of energy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were, I guess, playing on the astral realm. You were watching that when we were uh, sleeping or in meditation. I forget when that was. It was earlier today in meditation. I saw us in the astral realm. We're like these balls of energy and we play and we play and we play. And that's just what we do. Right. So, you know, again, we're we're not the body. The body is our vehicle. And that's in really so many different traditions around the globe. And, you know, this is this is how and what we work through in this 3D realm. Um, and our body is changing yeah, and everything is changing. So our vehicle is changing. Our vehicle is getting upgraded, guys. You know, we're heading out of, you know, being in a Ford Pinto. And, uh, you know, I won't say we're going into a Tesla, but who knows what we're going into. That's right. We are changing. We are upgrading. And part of these changing is working through your shadows, working through your problems, you know, your ancestral, working through that ancestral DNA. And that's another thing I do is I work on the ancestral river. It's fascinating when you look at these different legends, because when you look at the legend of white buffalo calf woman, you wonder... You know, if she really did exist, and now you have contact with her, so for you, she exists. Absolutely. Who and what is she, really? And I asked you to describe her energy, and how, uh, how would you describe her energy in just a few words? Powerful. Powerful and very... Um, Dynamic. Dynamic. So what would distinguish her from, like, another that we would be in contact with on a regular basis like Lakshmi energy for instance 
she's very earthy so when it comes to the the earthly realm she has a lot more to offer in that aspect so we could call her definitely a you know maybe a, a mother earth goddess energy definitely very interesting as we see this uh, depiction of white buffalo calf woman singing. And at the bottom you see Rainbow Warriors a Prophecy. So this is uh, just a little snippet talking about the story of when she came. And interestingly enough, you know, she will return at the end of the age again. So it's another one of those. And there was one of our family members that had a question and saying, you know, why would you, like we were talking about the ships and going up in the ships, why would you go up in the ships, you know, just go directly to source, you know, why would you trust anybody? Because there are benevolent ones, you know, not that we have to go up in the ships, but what we have seen, and I was talking to Raven about this, is that there's multiple legends uh, from around the globe that show that there's intervention by benevolent beings when perhaps there would be nothing left if they did not intervene. So if, for instance, and we've talked about the sun going Nova, like Douglas Vogt talks about, and he actually talks about two mile high, you know, tidal waves that sweep the globe. So if you guys saw the movie 2012, when they're on, you know, Mount Everest, they're in the Himalayas and it ain't high enough, uh, then you're going to need a little extra help. And so there are benevolent ones, so say so many legends, that have basically saved us from extinction. And they have taken us, you know, off or taken us in to the earth as well. Remember the uh, Hopi and the Anunnaki, the ant people that brought them inside the earth to write out, you know, the cataclysms, which perhaps were heading very close to another series of cataclysms like that, and then brought them back out. And the Cherokee, I uh, was talking to our brother Raven, uh, who is Cherokee, and the Cherokee say they were brought here after a cataclysm on another red sky planet by elder beings. They brought them here and, and landed them in Appalachia, when the Thunder Brothers played stickball in the sky, great sheets of lightning rained down from their uh, rained down from the sky, and the ground shook, raised and sunk as they fought the darkness in the heavens. The Zulu also um, talk about beings again, and the fact that we have star brothers and sisters from out there uh, that are very benevolent. And as to uh, the Dogon tribe as well, there are Siberian tribes that also talk about being moved to the lands by their sky friends, you know, being moved. And it's and there's other other tribes as well. So there's so many tribes and so many native people that remember this. And so we've talked about there being inner earth beings and being uh, Agartha, you know, for instance, Shambhala. Shangri-La, and we've talked about Telos, you know, which is more of a 5D. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and when you go and you look at the, um, I think, the petroglyphs, um, you can see there that somebody, it's almost like they used a laser technology to paint those pictures on the rocks. It is so cool. It's awesome. Yeah, I've seen some petroglyphs in person, mm -hmm. and it was very cool and uh, a very strong feeling of sacredness there. So, White Buffalo Calf Woman's finger retraced the movements of the arc. The White Buffalo Calf Woman asked me to notice how it starts at the level of the earth plane. And this is looking at a rainbow. Rises into the heavens, descends back down to the earth plane again. So full of hope, she said. Another word that she spoke was destiny. As she and I looked upon the rainbow together, she spoke, This is your destiny because the rainbow is part of who you are and of everything. And this is the energy exchange that we're talking about, too, just to let you guys know what we have gleaned from our interaction with our guides. It is an energy exchange. So when we send positive energy, say if we're doing a mantra, and just out of our personal 
uh, experiences, which we, we always do mantras with Ganesh and Lakshmi. That's just, you know, what it's developed into. And we do other ones as well. Um, what it does is it sends energy to them. And it's, it's also an acknowledgement, uh, an invitation, you know, to, if, if you will, please, you know, bless us with guidance, intuition, anything that we could use to raise ourselves up and be a better, be of better service to the planet and everybody on the planet. Most definitely. And as we open ourselves up to their energy, they're able to come in and work on our energy. So it's very much a two way street. You know, I back when I was about 20, 21, 22, and I had gone from going to the fundamentalist, uh, you know, evangelical churches, laying out of hands and all that, to doing, uh, you know, experiencing uh, more, well, different systems, you know, and actually going to pagan circles, Wiccan circles. Um, but I, that didn't mean that that's all I did because I was always kind of including everything. So I never kind of threw one thing all the way out the window and try another thing. I kind of integrated mm -hmm. and, you know, took a little bit of that, took a little bit of this because I feel that really it's all about our intention and where our heart is. It's not necessarily that you have to have one system. And I think that what we're heading into now it's going to be that realization, you know, that we can take the best of all different systems and we could integrate that in, in, in our own personal uh, medicine wheel of sorts. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what it's all about. It's about taking your soul spark and making something wonderful with it, whatever, whatever fulfills it most for you. So if you look at this, you can look at the rainbow as the one end here is us here. We throw our intentions, we throw our energy up towards source, up towards the heavenly realms. It's taken and then it's amplified in whatever way that they decide is best and they send it back down to us here on this realm so that there is an energy exchange. So you see, the white buffalo are sacred to many Native Americans, the Lakota, Sioux Nation, passed down the legend of white buffalo a story now about 2000 years old and so they say this was actually around 10 to 12 bc when this story actually happened a long time ago so at many council meetings sacred ceremonies and through the tribe's storytellers there are several variations all are meaningful and all tell the same outcome have communication with the creator through prayer with clear intent for peace harmony and balance for all living, all life, living in Mother Earth and living in and on Mother Earth with harmony with the Earth. And that's where we've, we've lost that. We've lost the harmony part. Spirituality among Native Americans and non-Native Americans has been a strong force for those who believe in the power of the Great Spirit. So, you know, Great Spirit, God, Prime Creator, whatever words and as it says it, it matters not what you call the creator what matters is that you pray pray to and give thanks for your blessings and trust the guidance given to you from the world of spirit many truths about spirit are told and handed down from one generation to the next so you have to have an open heart and you have to have open communication and again it does the words don't really matter it's more your heart and your intention the heart and intention is really, really important. <clears throat> and vibration, you know, what, what vibration are you emitting? Because what you vibrate out is going to come back to you. So the legend of White Buffalo Calf Woman tells us how the people had lost their ability to communicate with the Creator. The Creator sent the sacred White Buffalo Calf Woman to teach the people how to pray with the pipe. With that pipe, seven sacred ceremonies were given for the people to abide in, in order to ensure a future with harmony, peace, and balance. So there, there is part of the legend which talks about two young men out hunting when they were out of nowhere. A beautiful maiden came dressed in white buckskin. One of the hunters looked upon her and recognized her as a wakan, or a sacred being, and lowered his eyes. So, uh, you know, the great and shining ones. She's one of them, the great and shining ones, the ancient great and shining ones. 
And um, we would perhaps look at her as a deva, a devic energy, angelic type of energy. Now, the second hunter approached her with lust in his eyes because she was beautiful. And white buffalo calf woman beckoned the lust of a warrior to her. And as he approached, a cloud of dust arose around them, causing them to be hidden from view. And when the dust settled, nothing but a pile of bones laid next to her. So as she walked towards the respectful young hunter, she explained to him that she had merely fulfilled the other man's desire, allowing him within that brief moment to live a lifetime, die in decay. White buffalo calf woman instructed the young man to go back to the people and tell them to prepare for, the, uh, for her arrival to teach them of the way to pray. The hunter obe obeyed. And when white buffalo calf woman arrived with the sacred bundle, the prayer pipe, she taught the people of the seven sacred ways to pray. Interesting number seven again, right? Seven chakras, the seven ancient planets, seven, seven, seven. <laughs> Lots of sevens. These prayers are through ceremonies that include sweat lodge for purification, the naming ceremony for child naming, the healing ceremony to restore health to the body, mind, spirit, the adoption ceremony for the making of relatives, the marriage ceremony for uniting male and female, the vision quest for communing with creator for direction and answers to one's life, and the Sundance ceremony to pray for the well-being of all people. When the teaching of the sacred ways was complete, white buffalo calf woman told people she would return again for the sacred bundle that she had left with them. Before leaving, she told them that within her were the four ages, and she would look back upon the people in each age, returning at the end of the fourth age to restore harmony and spirituality to a troubled land. She walked a short distance. She looked back towards the people and sat down. And when she arose, they were amazed to see that she had become a black buffalo. Walking a little further, the buffalo lay down, this time arising as a yellow buffalo. The third time, the buffalo walked a little further and this time arose as a red buffalo. Walking a little further, it rolled on the ground and rose one last time as a white buffalo calf, signaling the fulfillment of the white buffalo calf prophecy. The changing of the four colors of the white buffalo calf woman represents the four colors of man. White, yellow, red, and black. These colors represent the four directions, north, east, south, and west. The sacred bundle that was left to the Lakota people is still with the people in a sacred place on the Cheyenne River Indian Reservation in South Dakota. It is kept by a man known as the keeper of the white buffalo calf pipe. Arvel looking horse. Legend of white buffalo calf woman remains ever promising in this age of spiritual enlightenment and conscious awareness. In today's world of confusion and war, many of us are looking for signs and peace for sure. So very interesting too, coming back at the end of the age, you know, and going to help us to usher in the new age, the new era. And so you see that it's not just one people that were given a, a prophecy, the only legitimate prophecy. It's time that we put ego aside and recognize the sacredness of all these directives that have come from these benevolent beings they will move over the earth like a great whirling rainbow bringing peace understanding and healing everywhere they go so the rainbow is is that acknowledgement that there's sacredness in every every being every being no matter what your color you know no matter what your race or your creed and Globally, there's legends of the ancient and shining ones that have taught us all these things. And we do get that they're going to return as well. As your vibration raises, forces will come to work against you. They are afraid of your power. Your spiritual awakening scares the sleepers and it scares the dark ones. And that is true. So as you awaken, it doesn't mean that it gets necessarily easier. It might become a little bit harder. But at the same time, you will know you're more firmly on your path. I always say new level, new devil. Something's going to try to keep you down. So watch out for that. So we just wanted to share this with you guys. Thank you so much for your support in, on Patreon and also on Ko-Fi because you keep us going. As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste. <laughs>